this is our first official going live as some Hangout Hawks. We all were brought together via Gary V's V Friends project, and we all own Hangout Hawks. And we might have other people just pop on. Rant. Yeah, caw, caw. <laughs> Hi, Gary, if you're watching. So we, we've been helping each other behind the scenes really ever since it got started, but we haven't really put out content. And so uh, the impetus for this was Eric's got an amazing blog and he asked me so, for some feedback, which I was happy to do. But then I was like, why don't we share it out with the world and maybe other people can learn from it. Signe mm -hmm. can jump in and share feedback that she sees. And if we have time, maybe if there's something you want to look at, the Signe two of yours, whatever, like mm -hmm. we'll just yeah. do it. So the goal of this session specifically is to look at financialfreedomandme.com, which is Eric's incredible blog, and just look for tips and tricks and things that we can share to improve it. So Eric, let me share my screen. And while I do that, I want you to share with us a bit more about your blog and your goal with it. Yeah. Yeah. I I think a lot of people in the the Gary sphere would would have a similar message where they they're big on just sharing their journey or their approach to what it, whatever path that they're on. So that's something that I've I've taken to heart over the past to say two years, where a lot of what I've consumed over the years has been a lot of like personal development, I guess personal finance uh, material, if you will. So my objective with financial freedom and me is to take, I'm, I'm not there yet, uh, just so we're clear, like I'm definitely uh, a ways away, but the whole point of it is to document the process as I go and just sharing personal lessons on the path to financial freedom. Cause I think there's a lot of uh, messaging that gets missed after the fact when people are already there that like mm -hmm. all the nuanced things that a lot of people like myself would love to know um while they're in the middle of it so i try to be as raw as i can to share any tips or tricks that i come across on my specific path whether that's financial related or just personal related and just things that i've i can really lean on on my own specific journey and in hopes of it inspiring at least one or two people you know along the way i love that and there is i used to teach psychology and there is a psychological principle i don't remember the name of it where we forget what it feels like to not know something as soon as we know it so it is so amazing that you're documenting it as you go because you're sharing real things that you would forget even a day or a week or a month later mm -hmm. because we humans just forget what it's like to not know something and you can't remember every little detail so might as well share it as you go i love that yeah yeah, I think the the one of the funny things too that just popped in my head is just going back to like VCon. Um, I had a lot of obstacles that were holding me back mentally from just getting to an the I don't want to say threshold, but just like breaking past some self perceived barriers and just the simple things of like embracing authenticity or following your inner fire like what things that are commonly thrown around is something that i really took to heart from the last conference that we had earlier this year and i try to like share all of those things because it's also nice for me in the future if i'm you know fast forward uh 10 years from now and i've got you know i, I think of like campfires i don't know that's a very uh uh it's a it's it's some it's a visual that i commonly like refer back to is like when I'm talking with my family about how we were doing or where we we're at in this stage, you know, things that we, we um, can learn lessons from, like, that's kind of also a main reason that I'm doing all this is uh, to share with my own family too. So mm -hmm. it's, it's cool to, to look back on notes and be like, Oh my gosh, I remember that one time that I was um, going through that moment. And I like was trying to solve this problem for so long. And then I finally broke past it. And you know, being able to see that in real time is, is, is awesome. Mm -hmm. And even recording this, that to echo that, I kind of feel like my son right now is four, but when he's 14 or 24 or 44, he might want to look back and see what was his mom up to? What was she thinking? How did she speak? I would love to have videos 
of my parents or my grandparents or great grandparents, but that just doesn't exist. So even this right now, even if no one watches it, even if no one likes it, it's something that could be passed down who knows how. So if anyone's like, oh my God, I would never go live. Why not? So <laughs> what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Just yeah. try it. Don't pick, don't pick your nose. Don't pick your nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So really fast. I wanted to, just since I'm looking at this, I want to backtrack and I want to write down what our goals of the session are. So I want to do that. But while this is pulled up really fast, just one quick thought mm -hmm. on the opt-in, which I love is I might consider making it more personal, like okay. put a little picture of you, you and your wife, you and your family, whatever you're comfortable sharing. And, you know, like you're, you have, you're all set partner. So I don't know, wear like a cowboy hat and put like some thumbs up or something like kind of playful and funny and cute, whatever mm -hmm. you're comfortable with, because I think that that will help people right from the start to start I like connecting with you and your personality. Mm -hmm. And and also some, maybe something instead of you're all set is we look forward to the journey with you mm -hmm. or something like we're, you know, we're all in this together, you know, mm -hmm. kind of make it, it, because you're really, I looked on your blog a little as well, and you're asking for feedback. That's what's going to make it stronger is when people share their journey. So you can build that in and then right. you have stronger followers and, and such. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's uh, I, I, I think I'm a big fan of Pat Flynn's uh, well, I don't, I don't know if it's from him, but his Love whole that. a thousand, yeah, uh, the whole a thousand true fans. Oh, that's model. Kevin Kelly originally, but oh, he does. Okay, so mm -hmm. but maybe um, Kevin Kelly talks about too. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the the methodology. So yeah, that's that's good feedback to have. Is just having a a, a I'd rather have a couple loyal, engaged fans um, mm -hmm. versus the masses that barely check in on on anything that I put out. So that's that's mm -hmm. good feedback for sure. Mm -hmm. I love that. I'm gonna. Put down a couple notes as we go just to like share up later because yeah kevin kelly's a thousand true fans everyone should read this it takes like four minutes or whatever to read but it's mm -hmm. it's so great and it helps you just like take that stress of like i have to go viral to a billion people to have a business like no yeah. you don't so read that and you'll you'll feel a lot better it's, it's really mm -hmm. good so okay before we go a little farther what would you feel eric that if we accomplished in the session today that you would feel like it was successful and you're happy about it. Hmm. Slash, what do you want to look at specifically? Do you want to like deep dive into one article? Do you want to look at the blog as a whole? What are you thinking? Yeah, I, I think um, I'd like to think that I have a general North star of like why I'm writing it and, and somewhat of an avatar of who I'm writing it to. But I would love just a, a second set of eyes that that has been there, done that, has already built blogs. You can say like, hey, you're on the right path. I mean, validation would be great. Just like, hey, this this is great. I love the direction. Or, you know, what if we um, niche down a little bit more, just have a little bit mm -hmm. more direction of what someone else that's already been in my shoes before would do uh, so that I don't, I don't spend three years going on going left when I could have gone right. Oh, wow. All right. I love it. We can definitely do that. All right. So on that note, you shared before the call that your target audience would be ideally men 25 to 45. Tell us a little bit more about your thinking on your niche, your target audience. And of course we can have multiple, like what's like your core one? I mean, I, I, I'm saying that mainly because of that's the the stats that I have from my posts. So I just went through and just saw the main demographic is that that audience. But um, I'm just thinking uh, long term, it, you know, 20 years from now, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people that are in a similar spot that just don't know what they don't know. And I've I, I don't know the exact statistic, but there's just a lot of people that don't have any sort of direction and they don't know where to go from a financial standpoint or just in the sense of having someone that's mm -hmm. sort of kind of figuring it out with a with being a better person um you know I'm a father so it's like all these things I would really like to be able to share with people in the same 
sphere as me. So I can speak better to men because you know I am one. So it makes sense. I'm a you know 27 year old guy that's just kind of figuring his way out through life. So I think um, I've had conversations with plenty of 40 40 year old, 35 year old men. You know, we're all kind of hitting the same uh, message. We're all trying to just you know do better financially for our family. So that's the the core focus of where I would want to build my my um, message around. Hmm. Yeah, my first thought um, is potentially to narrow it even farther down, even, even further down. I literally learned the difference between further and farther like this year, even <laughs> though I'm like an English nerd. <laughs> um, I, I would say Nisha even more at least in your head when you're writing stuff or thinking about visuals and things, okay. because as a personal example, I'm 42 and I have a young son. Most other parents in my sphere who have young kids are in their late twenties. Mm -hmm. And um, what I have found is that I'll like throw out like a one liner from Die Hard and like eighties movies. And I'm like, ha ha Seinfeld, like all not eighties and nineties stuff. And they don't get it. Okay. And then some of them like draw dressed up as the Harry Potter cast for Halloween this year. And they were just like all about it. And they're like, we love Harry Potter. And I was like, eh, okay. But Harry Potter specifically came out when like they were in junior high. Mm -hmm. And so it was super important and formative in their sphere. And it came out when I was like studying abroad in Germany in college. So like I didn't even pay attention to it. So that kind of a thing, even just little references like that, if you kind of narrow it in more, you can think more about references or jokes or ways to connect personally with that target age range that could hit better. Makes sense. Yeah, it makes complete sense. And it's not to say that you wouldn't help someone 45, but if you're saying, sharing some like, hey guys, remember when we were in high school and XYZ came out, like that wasn't helpful in financial freedom. Like, you know, like they used to, Gary has said, cause Gary's just a couple years older than I am. And so he said stuff that totally resonates me with like lifestyles of the rich and famous was like the thing to aspire to in the eighties. And I remember watching that and thinking, wow, like I'm a loser if I don't have houses like that. Or in the 90s, it was all about like MTV Cribs. And so they would mm -hmm. show the rappers and cool celebrities cribs. And it was like, wow, like I have nothing compared to that. So like these things I could share if I had your blog, because then other people who grew up and experienced that would really connect. So what are they for you? Like, what did you grow up seeing? What YouTube okay. stars or, or whatever is relevant happened? If you share more of those little things it's not going to scare away the 35 and 45 year olds, but it would really pull in, mm -hmm. let's say like the 25 to 30 year olds. So kind of just, if you narrowed it in even more around your age range, it could hit a little better. Kind of like for that thousand true fans, like start right. with a thousand people. They don't have to be 25 and 45. They could be 25 to 30 per, per se, you know? Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I've uh, yeah. Cause I'll, 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 I'll throw some one liners out. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, I, I sort of, after the fact, I'm like, oh, that probably didn't land for 90% of people that, <laughs> that saw that, but okay. Well, and, and, and too, is just be you and it'll hit with whoever it, it sure. hits, you yeah. know, like, I don't think most people are obsessed with Die Hard like I am, but I'm just sharing that more and I need to share it even more because I literally watch Die Hard every single year. Like, I think it's the best Christmas movie of all time. And it really reflects a bit of my personality. I grew up with like action and like comedy movies. Like that's what I like. I don't like stuff that makes me cry. I want stuff that <laughs> makes me laugh or feel like, yeah, get them. So that will scare some of you away or, or at least people will be like, who cares? And it won't even bother them. They'll just go on to the next thing. So I don't know. So if um, your target audience is males, what do you think about this photo? I, 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 I've heard, uh, I'm not definitely, I'm not good at Pinterest, but I've heard that that's the approach after you post a blog, you like throw it up there. Um, but yeah, you're, you're, you're spot on. I just, I don't know enough about Pinterest. I'm just kind of following what, 
people say works <laughs> and <laughs> photos like that. I mean, I've had success with it in the past. So, you know, success leaves clues, but I definitely, um, I should definitely re redo a lot of the, the photos that I've put out because it, it needs to fit within my avatar, um, moving forward. Or what if it's you? Like, what if, you know, you have your wife take a picture of you, like literally doing that exact pose, even if your face isn't in it. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think of how can people connect more with you? Like Perfect. if you just, if someone just went to this site and looked at it, I don't see any, anything right at my first look right. to connect with you at all. I see. Yeah. I personally liked the one, the pictures of you and your family and then mm -hmm. like you with your child in your home and mm -hmm. that, you know, you, those are what I like. That's what I like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the other ones I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So That's I would cool. do more with you. Totally. And if you're comfortable with family pics, like get your cute little baby to sit in front of a laptop and put that as the, as the thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is the homepage? There mm -hmm. we go. Like, have the cute little baby, like looking at mm -hmm. it. You know, like, and then even in parentheses, it could be like that. I'm teaching my my son, daughter. Or I can't gender. tell what gender babies are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like something like that, where people are like, oh, he's a dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right away. Okay. And also, okay. people relate with uh, crap. I better get motivated if I'm a parent. To right. figure out my financial future. Mm -hmm. Right. So true. Yeah. Whether they have kids or not, like if they want to have kids, because like when I was 27, I didn't have kids, but I thought I wanted to. So seeing someone who had kids and making it work would really connect with me to want to learn more versus someone mm -hmm. like Signe, who's just going to be balling around for all time <laughs> on her <laughs> private jet. I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, but I can, of course, you can learn from everyone. And I have, shout out to Signe, learned so much already. Oh, you're sweet. Me too, <laughs> from you. But yeah, that's, so just yeah, that's really good feedback. Visual thoughts on that. Okay. Um, when I look at this too, it is, it does take up a lot of space. And so this is the, this is the homepage, right? Yeah. So you've got the homepage. Yeah. Have you ever played with or considered like, um, like a hero image that is you like, hi, I'm Eric. Join my family and me on our journey to financial freedom. Like as that as the top thing versus the first or the most recently published blog as the top. I have not. Um, I definitely could and should. Cause yeah, I'd, I mean, I've been self-taught. So I just kind of throw stuff around and um, no, that's good. So yeah, and, and would that would that home page would that be like the about me page? No. So I just put in smart passive income since you mentioned Pat Flynn. So shout out to Pat. He's really adjusted this to be more about his company versus like him right. specifically. But if you look at it, the first top thing mm -hmm. is a hero banner okay. with a, like a clear big headline. So that you can instantly go, oh, yeah, this is for me. I want to build my audience. I want to monetize. Cool. And then it says mm -hmm. who they help, beginners to pros, da, da, da. And there's a call to action to get their email right away. Mm -hmm. So, and then images to help you connect. Like, oh, I could see myself in a YouTuber. I could see myself in a music, I can't, but in a musician, podcaster. Oh, that's for me. So, like, you could have this be, it used to be in the past. It was a picture of Pat. Right. Up at the top so it could be a picture of you and your family just you whoever you're comfortable with let's look at gary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so he has a different like layout with the um menu on the side but mm -hmm. you look you go instantly i know this is gary i know i'm in the right spot there's that mm -hmm. brand building mm -hmm. he's smiling he looks approachable then it shows you know like what's he, what he's about now you scroll down and you can go deeper into what he's doing mm -hmm. that's but awesome. that yeah that top like above the fold are you familiar with that phrase yeah 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 so anything like right when you first look at it you gotta make the person know oh i'm in the right spot this is for me mm -hmm. okay and that's gonna 
it's going to help with brand building. It's going to help with people even going fast and going like, am I in the right spot? Like, I don't see Eric. So maybe I typed it in wrong and they bounce kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's definitely, no, that's actually really helpful because I've just, I kind of just, my pages have been, um, for a while it was like an anonymous thing where I was just trying to post totally. from, from this avatar, third person, whatever. And yeah, more recently, I'd say in the past six months or so, I've, I've transitioned to more just being sharing more about me and yeah, I've I completely disconnected from the fact that if it need if it's about me, you know, make me the central like head banner, um, hero image. And yeah, that mm. actually, it makes a ton of sense. It's so, it's so simple that you forget to do those types of things. Oh yeah. Trust me. And everyone yeah. don't go and look at my website. Cause I do, <laughs> I do better for others than my own. And we I have mean, to do a shout out for people following us on yeah. Facebook. I see yeah. ant there. Hi aunt. Caw, caw. Caw, caw. 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 Sense of fellow hawks. Isn't this great? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Eric, have you heard of Mr. Money Mas Mustache? Yeah. Yeah. He's oh, awesome. Course. Good. Well, and see, he, I feel like he at least started pretty anonymous. I feel like you could probably find his photo out there now, but yeah. he almost has kind of a persona. Right. Right. Where he's able to be a little bit more edgy than he would normally mm -hmm. by having this Mr. Money M Mustache persona. But still, when you go above the fold, you know you're in the right place. Right. Because it's got his little icon and his name, financial freedom through badassity. I like that. And then these are kind of cool that you can click on, which is just a whole different design thing. But uh, I think it's really clear where you are and what you're going to get. So mm. that would be my first feedback for this um, top part. Super helpful. Wow. All right. So what do you want to look at next? You want to look at a specific blog? Yeah. I mean, let's do that one. Um, if we can do that one. Well, you, I mean, you did, you did break it down already. So I did, I did revise a lot of the blogs. I, I, I don't know, I guess just generally, what are your thoughts? Cause I have a couple posts where they're more pillar posts, just, pure mm -hmm. volume and then i've got a couple like subtopic posts that are linking to it okay and mm -hmm. i i don't know if there's any other anything else i can do than just keep going keep doing that um and if there's a certain number of pillar posts to have versus subtopics like ratios anything like that hmm. um well my first thought as i scroll through is i don't see you at all Right. In any right. photos. Is this you guys? No, it's just a, a video that's kind of paraphrasing exactly what uh -huh. I was mentioning in that in that oh, that's section. That's good. Um, you know, like, why can't this be you holding a laptop? True. Um, why can't this be you? Put on a blind, like recreate every single photo you have. Like okay. Yeah, that would be good. Because then you can also reuse those as social media posts. So mm -hmm. Every image that you put in here, you could then also batch out to share, let's say every three days or mix it in with other stuff or whatever, and write the copy in different ways to entice someone to want to go back and read the full post about it. Because mm -hmm. each image is about a different rule. So it's kind of like, actually, that's amazing. Like, what is it? 13 rules? How many more days till Christmas? Eh, we're just a little bit past that. We could be like counting down the days to Christmas with oh, one true. rule of making money every day. Or you could do that counting down to the new year. So you could be like, all right, guys, today is rule number 13 about making money or number one, whichever direction you went. Number one, you could start with. And so it's the live before your live below your means. And so whatever image that you take for that section, you share that on social media, mm. you know, even copy and paste some of this or tweak it just a little bit. And then get people to want to go, you know, can you guess what rule number two is? And try to get people engaged on the social media post. If you want to see all 13, just jump ahead and go check out the blog. So you could be trying to drive traffic from social media to this post by repurposing images that you would also then use in it. That's gold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you could do like little videos too, like just go live, go or do a recorded, be like, hey guys. 
My most recent blog post is all about 13 rules of making money that I've learned over the years of my research and trying stuff out. I'm not a big baller yet, but this is what I want to share that I've got so far. Here is rule number one, and I'll go through all 13 over the next 13 days and do like just a quick little video talk through. Mm -hmm. And then you can embed those in here. There we go. Instead of some other whoever. I don't know that. I yeah. don't know them. That hooligan. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, you want to find a balance too of it like being sure. too like, Eric, look at me, you know, because I there's definitely other people where it's like, all right, enough of just like you, 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 you. So maybe sure. you're like, okay, I only want a picture of me like every other money rule. Sure. Or it doesn't have to be your face every time. So like you could get a cute little piggy bank. Maybe you've got one or even make one out of a box and write piggy bank on it mm -hmm. and just be like, I'm not spending my money on an actual piggy bank. That's a, that's a doodad as rich dad would say, I'm going to actually <laughs> just make it out of a box and draw a cute pig face on it and then put that out there. I don't know. You can just yeah. like be creative and yeah, have fun with it. Fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Heck yeah. No, that's, that's good. Yeah. Same thing with that one. Love it. Wow. That's so crazy. Yeah. It just gets your mind going on like yeah. all the different areas of, of improvement. Wow. Yeah. Holy I would just moly. say like, like if you want to stand out, like if your goal is to stand out to a thousand true fan people, how are you going to, how is that easiest? And most effective i think it's by truly sharing who you are and having fun with it and making it uniquely your world versus stock photos or maybe images that they someone else might use on pinterest type of a mm -hmm. thing and i'm not trying to say this to like be mean because trust me like i have used stock photos because sometimes you're like i'm too tired like i i don't look cute i'm not gonna go take do a photo shoot but if you don't feel like good to show your face on something then do something like that or just yeah. your computer. Um, I think the extra steps are really helpful for connecting. And you know what? It's also helpful for SEO because I don't know how they do it, but they're not dumb. Like they know when photos are used over and over again. Plus mm -hmm. like if it's like, uh, social, everything, I think like having something unique is going to help the bots and the humans. And that's what we want to connect with. Yeah. I mean, it, and it's just like, uh, I'm just throwing a, a, a thing that popped in my head. So on my YouTube channel, like if someone sees a Pinterest post in passing and then they end up finding my um, face and like, oh, wait, I've seen this guy a couple of times now. Yes. So I, yeah, it connects the dots a little bit better too. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, that's why I some people. Content, oh, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, you go. No, I think you really need to expand on your content too. As someone who's older than you and has already built built wealth, you know, because mm -hmm. I I was a financial advisor, so I was a stockbroker, and now I'm a luxury realtor. So I totally understand the financial markets and real estate markets and how to build wealth. Um, there are some great books that you can read and use to uh, understand more in building wealth. And then those are great topics you can share. You have to mm -hmm. be super careful. I did notice like in one post, you did say, Hey, I'm not a financial advisor. But <laughs> you really, you need to have those disclosures everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, this is not money advice. I'm not a licensed financial advisor kind of thing, okay. but you know, there another aspect of investments is the psychology of investments. There's a great book by Morgan Housel, mm -hmm. uh, The Psychology of Money, that's yeah. beautiful. Um, you know, you need to explore uh, stock investing, but, you know, the average person really builds wealth through real estate because you can buy it with zero to three and a half percent down and you're building wealth on other people's money, you know, so mm -hmm. that's huge. Yeah. So whether you interview people who've done it or mm -hmm. uh, really do some studying, but if you have questions, I'm always here for you. 
Yeah, uh-huh. I, I definitely, um, that's kind of the thing too. It's, I, uh, I get this thought. It's like, I, I definitely want to be careful talking about certain investment options or whatever. Mm-hmm. I, I try to only talk about the things that I, I have physical experience in like house hacking and things of that nature, because I, I know how the process goes, at least as much as I am comfortable as with. You've done. Yeah. As much as you've done, you're a young man. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. so if you interview people who are already experts who've done other things and they can say their perspective, then you're just sharing their perspective. So you're not legally liable for what they say, you know, that might be a way to kind of zig around it. But like, especially when you're young, like Roth IRAs, Mm -hmm. because the way you really make money in all investments is time. time. Because like uh, at the time the book was written that Laura just put on uh, the screen, the psychology of money, which is, it's the best book ever. But, um, and the numbers, of course, I'm going to screw up. But when this book was published, Warren Buffett, I think he had 84 billion, but 81.5 billion wasn't until he was uh, 60. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. he had made all of it, (laughs) you know, it took a long time to get there because of the the compounding effect. So compounding of money is huge. And the rule of 72, that's Mm -hmm. a great thing you can share. You know, that's an easy thing I can teach you, the rule Mm -hmm. of 72. There's a lot of great, easy things you could learn and teach that people would love. But um, yeah, the compounding and building wealth, it's just a very interesting thing how to build wealth. But it does take time, unfortunately. I thought I'd have it all by the time I was 30. It took me decades longer. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a uh, they they say that compounding is like the eighth wonder of the world. Oh, it's the most beautiful yeah. thing. And yeah, see the see his age. See how it just skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's because of compounding. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, and that's how that's why debt is so bad too, because you just compound in the wrong direction, and then you can never get out of it. Debt is horrific. Yeah, you know, I just and- uh, yesterday I paid off my my final payment of of all consumer debt. So that was a very. Uh, right. So when I was writing the rules of money, there's a section in there about paying off debt. I have very strong words <laughs> toward, <laughs> towards uh, debt in general. Uh, it's just it's crazy because it's so easy to get into. Um, I feel like they just hand debt out like candy now, or they hand loans out like it. So yeah. it's just it's. Um, Mm-hmm. I, mean, I I like I I take certain things from Dave Ramsey. I think he has a very good, I mean, a, a great mm-hmm. philosophy of paying off debt. Um, and I I adopted that you know pretty quickly. But yeah, he says the income you make is the greatest wealth builder you can have because it's like a one thing you can really control. And then you, assuming you use it wisely, um, yeah. you just let let it ride. But you can't really build substantial wealth until you're out of debt because you're just handing mm-hmm. your money away every single month. So yeah. you're just where, a- mm-hmm. where's the picture of you? I know going like this with the date on it saying just paid off the last dollar of debt. We'll never go back. Like literally take a picture after we're done with this or even yeah. like a video and turn it into like a, a gift. Happy or- dance. Happy yeah. dance. Okay. Okay. Because that like if you want to document your journey, like fucking document it. Like that's yeah. amazing to hear that just happened yesterday. That's like, awesome. Yeah. And it's calendar. not a perfect journey. I've been in and out of debt multiple times. I've had lots of money. Then I've been down to less than $20 and I build it back up because I've been in commission sales, you know? (laughs) So, and I didn't get married till 51. So uh, it's not a perfect life. It's not a straight line. And when you're being entrepreneurial, if not, if you're not on a salary, then it's a lot riskier. So yeah, but you just always have to be thinking long-term. Yeah. Yeah, but absolutely. long-term is where you win the game. Now, it is a tricky balance because you can't give up everything. You still have to have, you know, I know with Laura and I, we really value 
life experiences. So my husband and I, we still, even while working, would take nine trips a year. You know, we still had a lot of fun. We still like nice wine. We, you know, we still have lived pretty large. We drive nice cars. But uh, and then in other things, I was conservative. Like my main house, I lived in 18 years, but then I bought other investment properties. And then, you know, I sold that other house, but um, I bought another. But um, that allowed me, by being conservative in one area, allowed me to build wealth in others. Exactly. And, and I, I'll beat you to the puns, Laura. I, I know you're pulling up for <laughs> me. Um, his, my, one of my favorite things to do when it comes to that is, uh, is kind of like, I know they say you can't have your cake and eat it too. I, I think you, ca you can in some ways. Like I yeah. do allocate a little bit of money every month for yeah. just adventures, trips, things like that. You must. Um, yeah. And, because you, yeah, you, must. you have to, you don't know when the gig is up. You don't yeah, know when exactly. your time is up. My husband and I were in uh, Mazatlan on a trip and we both got COVID and uh, we got the Delta virus. We were there 28 days. And I thought, wow, I am so glad we have partied like rock stars and been all over the world and had fun. Because if that would have been the end, we would have been okay with it. Because we had really, you know, we'd built a good life. We'd had a lot of fun. We'd had success in business. Uh, but if we would have saved a ton of money and built, we would have had a lot more money if we didn't spend as much as we did on trips, but that would have been a life wasted. Yeah. Yeah. They say, you know, delayed gratification. I think people take it a little too hard. They like get ramen and just, you know, lock themselves in their, their house for, for months. It's like, you gotta, you gotta live a little bit. You can't, you know, it's, it's, it actually keeps you energized if you have something to look forward to. And yes. also reward of some sort. Mm -hmm. And you'll love the book, The Psychology of Money, because there's a story. Uh, and the one guy, you'll never recognize his name, and I've already forgotten it, but he was the most successful um, investor of all time. He shorted mm -hmm. the oh, you're talking about stock okay. market oh, in, in, in the 08? Great Depression. No, in the Great oh, Depression. Oh, that one. And uh, he yeah. made the equivalent of like nine billion dollars in a day. Whoa! Crazy. But, but it wasn't enough. Oh he, right! He and kept he kept betting and betting, and eventually lost it all, and then eventually committed suicide. Mm -hmm. So it's about finding a balance. And I'll tell you from being a financial advisor, it's very hard for people to find that. You have to be happy because money is not happiness. Money is an empty bag. Money is like sand through your hands. And there's a study that says once you make at least $75,000, meaning you can really pay all your bills and do a few extra things, there's really no difference between 75,000 and 150,000 in your happiness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're in a bigger house, you're in a fancier car, you're in a jet, whatever. No but money, more problems, you mm -hmm. Well, money, baby. But so truly, you have to find happiness within yourself first. Money is not the answer. And so many people think, I'll be happy when I have more money. And that is wrong. <laughs> you have to already be happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the psychology of money, it's a phenomenal book. There's at least a hundred things you could write a blog on in there. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was one of my, um, I sort of tinkered with book reviews in the past, but um, creating very detailed ones would be, would be great. Specifically that one I've, I've read it like two years ago. I've, forgotten most of it but i'm sure like subconsciously some of those practices are still there but mm -hmm. um no the, like that that's where it's it, yeah there's always something to be gained every time you reread a book you're in a different chapter of life and you have right. experiences you could read the exact same words and, and different points hit harder um, right. no matter where you're at because that's that's what you're going through and few books you know speak that people say books speak to you certain ones do rich dad poor dad does psychology mm -hmm. and money does um mm -hmm. i will teach you to to be rich did you know there's certain ones that are like it's like you're he's like holding you your shirt and like looking you right in the eyes and it's like talking yeah. directly to you um mm -hmm. and i think that's where 
a lot of value can be gained and just like having a core pillar article that that references all of that material um you know at least personally where it hit home for me would be would be great to do uh tom wheelwright has a great book the other thing in real estate is the uh, tax advantages mm -hmm. um tom wheelwright has some great business books he's a cpa about tax advantage zero oh, yeah. it, it's like zero taxes but it really isn't zero taxes we all have to yeah he's great the eight, he's uh yeah that was a it was a bit of a tough read because it's a lot of tax tax stuff but um yeah. it is uh, that was one he's the cpa for for robert right oh, yes for yes for robert kiyosaki and i think tim ferris and all oh, those wow. he's i mean i listen to his books on tape because i've got a mm -hmm. an s corp and it's very fascinating yeah he's very fascinating Oh. I can't even read my own taxes. They're so complex, but he doesn't do my taxes. I have another gal, but there's a lot of great tax advice in there, mm -hmm. especially if you guys have kids. He's got all kinds of things, you know, because you can pay your kids. You mm -hmm. could start Roth IRAs sure. for your children, which would be freaking unbelievable. Oh, man. So that would too. be great. You know, even if you just put small amounts in, it wouldn't yeah. even matter if you could even fund mm -hmm. 500 a year now oh yeah now, you guys your kids will be supporting you in old age <laughs> <laughs> it's a good That's point. Have kids. i don't know if the dogs can i do a roth ira for my doggies i don't know <laughs> you can i'll be their custodial guardian we rescued her from a homeless guy she's living a, a luxurious life now all right well let's let's also get back to your blog and see what else we can share specifically for feedback um very small but occasionally i see like just inconsistent capitalization like or mm -hmm. just capitalization i'm like a nerd for that kind of thing makes sense um there are some themes you could consider like right now it's really there's not a lot of white space mm -hmm. on the margins so it's kind of like to oh. read it you're kind of like mm. okay oh. like that so i might consider adding more white space so maybe more padding on it so that it's condensed this way it'll make it longer but mm -hmm. i feel like having it so long is a little bit hard on the eyes to read okay and then you could also consider having let's say the content is two-thirds of the page one-third of the page could be like a sidebar with calls to mm -hmm. actions or, mm -hmm. or things like that. Or they could also be other things that just help connect people to you and your brand. Okay. Or like, you know, the best of, it could be like most popular of the blog or most popular resource or whatever. Um, and that's just another like layout sort of thing. Do you use any plugins for helping optimize SEO? Uh, I, I switched from Yoast to Rank Math, uh, if that's what you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Do you have it like built into your WordPress? I downloaded the plugin from WordPress. I don't, I, I don't, I, beyond that, I just went to the plugin store through WordPress and did it there, um, unless there's a better way or more effective way. Because I was going to say, maybe if you're up to it, you could share your screen and show us the back end of a blog. And we can maybe look yeah. at like what I have. I think I have Yoast. And I mean. at the very bottom, there it will give you suggestions on how to improve the SEO mm -hmm. for the blog. Do you optimize? Do you try to optimize that each time? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely am a... Uh, yeah, I try to do the like the 80 20. So if I, 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 whenever I have some free space, let me, uh, let me just share. I'll usually just go, do I just, I don't know what I share in here. Okay. I think I see it. Um, so I just, I'll go through the most popular blogs first. That's like my main priority. I uh, will share it from there or, or we'll update blog posts based on rank math from there. And mm -hmm. then, 
um, we'll kind of go down the line based on which ones are the most popular so that mm. these are getting the, the first, mm. you know, dibs, if you will. But is this the page that you want to see or? I haven't used rank math per se. Okay. When you're in a specific post, for example, does it show you any SEO information like at the bottom? Yes. Yeah, so like if you go into the 13 rules, maybe we could, or whatever one, it doesn't matter which one you want to do. Yeah. Let me try. Yeah. I just want to, while we're on that, that one, let's just do that. Just keep it succinct. Um, so yeah, you'll have. Like you out of a hundred. That's good. Looks like you've paid attention. <laughs> Somewhat. Um, it's similar to Yoast in how it mm -hmm. structures everything. I mean, there's pros and cons of each, I guess. But All right. What does it say for the red errors? Keyword density is 0.25. Okay. Yeah. So what is the keyword you're trying to rank for on this one? Uh, it would be rules of making money. Okay. That's really easy to then... I would think, yeah, I don't Up know why. Usage. I think it's, yeah, I don't know how the heck I, oh, I think it's because I, like all these little, little parts is like rule, but not rules. Right. Simple, simple things like that. Um, and with that, that's where I get a little careful because I don't want to start keyword stuffing it where it doesn't need to be. You yeah. Know? I mean, I don't even think you're going to have to use it that much more, mm -hmm. but like, Let's see. You could easily just weave it in. So um, do you like a command F search to find a rule of making money where you use it singular and not in the in the title? So just type in rule of making. Yeah, so it's likely all of the. OK. But only 10, not 13. Yeah. It'd be the H10 or H2. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, so you used it sometimes plural and sometimes not. Yeah. Maybe sometimes. you did that on purpose to like get the keyword in. I don't know. Yeah. Uh but like a simple go. rephrase, you could make yeah, that. Be yeah, yeah. That's no problem. I can do that easily. Like, you know, this is one of my favorite rules of making money. Da -da -da -da. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's where yeah, that's an easy improvement. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just, yeah, it's I, I'm I'm assuming it's because I just started. For just going, adding a ton of words and it was good at one point and I just kind of forgot about the fact that I need to keep on top of it. Uh, yeah, that's an turn. easy fix to go back. Yeah, and, that's and no problem. And then this is like, I guess they're trying to upsell. Yeah, just, that's weird. Okay. Um, For your images, are you using alt tags with the keyword in it? Uh, as, as often as I can remember of course the one mm. i clicked <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Your face is off. <laughs> uh, and, and it would all would it all be catered towards the keyword yeah i mean you want to use the keyword naturally in okay. at least some of the images i think that if you use it too many then yeah, yeah their, their bots are like what is going on this is stuffing it yeah. but like this you could describe like how to climb the tower of financial freedom by using like never forgetting the 13 rules of money. Right. Ah. Like, you could just describe the image real okay. realistically, but work in the keyword in the alt text. Got it. And that also helps with um, accessibility. So there are people who are consuming blogs, but they can't, see and mm -hmm. so they're they're having like the pages content read to them and if okay. there's no alt text on it, it there's nothing to be read so they're missing oh. some mm. of it so I like i've never really known the alt the purpose of it i just yeah okay that's actually really good feedback so it would it just take is it other situations with the the picture just doesn't it takes too long to load and it just loads whatever the alt text is is in replacement um there could be that i mean so alt text i know for sure that the like google's bots are searching that for helping identify the relevance of your post to put mm -hmm. out there in search so if your images are described in the alt text 
mm-hmm. with the relevant keyword or or sim- similar phrases. It doesn't have to be the exact keyword, but similar phrases. Then it's going to indicate to Google's bots, yes, this post is so relevant. Even the images are on topic. Wow! Mm-hmm. So that's that's, that's the big part of it with SEO. The other way that I definitely know is folks that can't see or visually impaired. Sure. There are tools that will read the blog to them. And if it comes to a photo, it'll just skip it if there's nothing describing it. Hmm. It's like, you know, imagine like an AI tool that just reads it like an audiobook to them. If there's nothing describing the picture, how will they know the AI tool is not going to be like, there's a plumber with a thumbs up. I see. Yeah. You know, they don't know unless there's something in that alt text. So you want to do it selfishly for SEO, sure. but then also selflessly, it's nice to have something in there. So people who have visual impairments, or maybe even they don't have a visual impairment, but they love the tool and they just want blogs read to them while they're multitasking or something, then that would help them know what the images are about. Wow. I'm going to sign off as I have an appointment, but I learned a lot, Laura, and great to hear about your blog. And I signed up, so I'll keep watching what you're doing, Eric. Congrats. Thank you so much for the signal. I'll, I'll message you um, it, shortly if we can coordinate something as well. Sounds fun. Okay. Right. See you Thanks guys for coming on. You bet. Bye. Super fun. Bye, guys. Cool. So let's see what else. What else? Um, another thing, link ins and link outs. So like internal link outs. Yeah. So are you, you're linking to other blogs. I think I saw that when I looked at this. Yeah. Uh, my, I found this plugin recently. I don't know if you use it. Um, it's a oh. godsend. It is oh, really? probably my favorite plugin just because it, it kicks so much butt. So you, you give it a keyword or keywords that it needs to use as an internal link. So making money, rules of making money, uh, it could do rule of making anything like that. So anytime any of my other posts contain that word, it'll link directly to this blo- this post itself. And I didn't know that that was a thing until recently because a lot I found a lot of my links that I had updated months prior don't connect anymore. So that was a mm. big challenge. So I, I found that and that was actually... Um, super helpful to be able to to get everything to link correctly so that it's not telling um, so that's you know building authority and what have you but in terms of external linking that's mm. something that I'm not I don't have a ton of knowledge on so I'm just kind of throwing anything out there that I don't have um, a, a, an article on already so example totally. books things like that and when you do external ones like let's look at those really fast. I forgot to check this when I was. Are you having those open in a new window? Uh, they should be. Uh, geez, what the heck? Is this because the margins are too? Uh, would that be some? Would, they're they're too wide so that they're not configured the right way? Because I I often don't see them. That's <laughs> if weird. They're, if they're like that, but um, as often as I can, I'll try to have them. Mm, yeah, open. like oh, good. Yeah, you click the little box. Yeah. Yeah. So as often as I'm able to, to do it so that that's correct, right? You want it to open. Yeah. I mean, that's what I do. Cause it's not, I don't think it matters for SEO purposes, but like you kind of want someone to, if they go off and read something else, you want them to be like, oh wait, what was I doing before? And still have your window open. At least that's Absolutely. how I think of it. So it. usually internal links, I just let them open in the same window. Okay. And then external, I always have ex- open in a new window, but you could just default it to have them all open in a new window. Okay. And actually, even as a user, I'm always opening things in new windows, which is why I have like a thousand windows open at all times. But um, like if you're on mobile or not thinking about it, you might right. forget like who actually showed me this trick. I Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> but. Yeah, absolutely. I have... Uh... I checked once. I had like 800 tabs on my phone (laughs) (laughs) on on like uh, Safari. And, you know, you just, yeah, scroll brain. You just like, oh, yeah. Click it. And then you're like, ah, whatever. I'll do it later. I'll I'll remember what that was later. And then three months go by. (laughs) 
Seriously. And, like yeah. I reset my computer this morning just before this. Cause I was like, all right, if we're going to be live streaming, like, let me at least just like have a fresh reboot mm -hmm. start. But then I'm like, oh, I'm going to forget all the things I was working on. But I kind of figure at this point, if I can't remember, maybe it wasn't as important. So and a yeah. quick shout out to Manny. Hello, fellow Hawk. I'm glad you got home in time to catch some of this. Maybe you can come on a future one with us. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Manny. That's awesome. I uh, So so I, I don't know. Uh, it shares on Facebook too? Yeah. So the plan that I signed up for just to try this out is you can stream up to three. So it's streaming right now on Twitch, Facebook, and I think LinkedIn. Heck yeah. But we've only got comments from Facebook so far. Um, I mean, I'm glad we got comments at all. I'm like, cool. I know. <laughs> First yeah. time. Well, I mean, I've done live before, but probably not since I was pregnant. So probably not since like 2018 or something. Okay. Heck yeah. Um, Have you done live? Well, and we forgot to shout out that you just destroyed Gary V, <laughs> by the way, in a Uno challenge. Uh, forgot man. to mention that at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. I, it passed. It slipped my mind, but it's uh yeah that was a that was a blast i know we, we chatted about it recently but um yeah that was that was a fun time it was definitely intense just being there um live live and everything i walked in there was like 12 cameras it's like, oh, oh yeah. this, is, this is big time so it's fun yeah yeah i after i spoke on the stage at vcon it was similar like like after after we all all the speakers who were still around stood there and then gary joined and I look out and there's like 30 cameras yeah, and yeah. I'm like, oh, this is what it feels like to be like on the red carpet. I mean, very small version of a walking the red carpet at the Grammys or something. <laughs> yeah, he's got that. He's got that effect. Um, yeah. It's weird. I, I don't know. Yeah, it's like time kind of slows down a little bit. You're uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you get like tunnel vision. But um, yeah, it's a it's fun, fun thing. But I had, uh, I don't think I had any other like outstanding questions. I mean, I'll, I've definitely got a ton of, of, uh, little tiny fixes that obviously, you know, compound where you, you do this, this, you know, changing pictures, changing the theme, like basic things that, um, are best practices. You know, I've got my, my homework, but, uh, let me see. I don't really have any other big questions i mean i i mean there's i, I definitely have a t uh, a good direction of where i would like to go uh, at this point moving forward i'll definitely keep the, the 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 core message closer to to where i'm at in my own journey and try to throw out some more personal humor mm -hmm. but hmm, i mean any other any other things that that you were noticing that we haven't gotten to yet that stick out i don't think so i feel like the biggest thing was just the personalization mm -hmm. like just truly making it like oh wow i'm at eric's blog like the more that people can know you and connect with you and just like gary says you don't that doesn't mean you have to share pictures of your kid or have to share certain per, super personal things but just letting your personality come through in images, in the stories, in the shares. Yeah, I, th I think one of the things I texted you earlier was like about these rules of money is even if it's a one liner or one paragraph at the beginning or at the end of each rule, share something very specific about how you've gone through it or you are on that stage. Mm -hmm. So that as people are reading, because like when I first read this one, there was a bit of you in there. There was. No, I'm not saying there wasn't. But it felt a bit more like book reporty, like okay. you're like I'm the third party just bringing this to you from what mm -hmm. I've compiled, which is valuable. Right. But I think to take it to the next step, insert more of you in there in addition, so that people will not only learn from all the things that you've brought in, but also connect with you at where you are, and see themselves in you. Yeah, that's that's definitely been the missing piece because a lot of my uh i i did something like that when i first started a blog i didn't know what i did. i was just putting words out there um and now i i've 
I was thinking that I was getting more structured and just like removing myself from the blog and just like, here's the information, but that com that's completely, um, I'm trying to think it, it's, it's a going against my core message of why I'm writing this blog. It's like right. documenting my personal story. So how am I supposed to write a, a personal, uh, journal, if you will, if I'm not in it, you know? Exactly. So that, that makes complete sense. And that's definitely been the missing piece that I've been, um, I haven't, I haven't, it hasn't clicked until now. So I, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. Just lean in with it more, have fun with it more, I'd say. And like, also, I mean, since you're documenting it, like to have your kid be able to look back at this in the future, mm -hmm. like how massive and amazing is that? So like, forget about everyone else. If you just did it as a legacy thing, just right. to have something to pass on. That's so cool. And you would want to be personal. You would want to share yeah. how you really are feeling about each of these rules right now. Right. That makes, yeah, it's, I mean, that's, that's the, the best way to think of it, you know, and it's, it's tough too, because I let that, it's not ego, but it's definitely that, um, that weird voice that, you have every now and then where it's like, ah, is this too, am I oversharing? Am I putting too much of me out there? Cause I, you know, I, I like to say that I don't care what people think, but I do some consciously sometimes. So it is, uh, it's definitely a, a battle that I'm still working on, but, um, no, you're, you're, you're hitting the, the nail on the head right now. Well, we, yeah, trust me. I go, I feel like that too. And honestly, like if anyone encounters it and they're like, okay, this is too much about Eric's personal life. Don't care. <laughs> right. They can move on to someone else that doesn't do that. And that's right. fine. You don't need a million, a billion people to care or get value out of it. Um, actually, I was just re-listening. You know, I love Tim Ferriss too. And I had mm -hmm. his podcast on um, before this call. I was making bread. Another live stream topic we could do is making bread from scratch. Um, and he replayed his interview with Jamie Foxx, who I love because mm -hmm. I was all about in living color. Shout out to the people in the 90s who that was like way funnier than SNL. And so I love Jamie Foxx. And so he replayed that. And now he's playing, in addition, Maria Popova. Mm -hmm. well, I also heard that episode in the past, but uh, he wanted to shine more light on it. And why I'm saying all this is she has a blog, I think it's called Brain Pickings. And she's been doing it for like 13 years at this point or something like that. And she said that she is literally writing it for an audience of one. Mm. She is writing it for herself. She's mm -hmm. like, it brings me value to think these, to, to read and consume these great works of literature or whatever, to think about it and then to write about it. If anyone else is interested, cool, but I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it because it makes me happy. Right. So for you do it because it makes, it fulfills your soul to share whether it helps anyone else. Okay. But it helps you feel good about putting something out into the world that you wish you had five years ago, seven, 10, whatever years ago. And in addition, it can help your future generations. Like what is there more to that? Who cares if someone thinks that you're oversharing? Fuck yeah. them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Good <laughs> Lord. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's gold. I mean, that's, um, cool. that's definitely where I have, I have a little bit more, uh, unfiltered approach more on the, the YouTube side of things just because I can just ramble. Um, so, th but with blogging, I definitely need to hone into that more simply because it's like, you know, when you write, you have a little extra second to, mm. to think about what you're putting out there. So you want to, I mean, I, I used to try to just be very, um, I, I think it's I just the corporate, the corporate approach. Mm. It's like very corporate-y. So you're just like, uh, checking the boxes without hitting any, striking any real emotion, just trying to like, get yeah. through whatever it is. Um, and I've, and I'm now getting more back into that approach of, um, building a personal connection because there is me in there. So yeah, that's, 
I mean, that's huge. And, it, and it's cool. Cause I've, I've showed my, um, my family, some of this stuff and they, you know, it's, it's crazy. Cause you're in your own little bubble for so long. You're doing this, you're just plugging away. And then every now and then like someone, one of your family members is like, Hey, I saw your article. I saw your video. And you're like, Oh yeah, I forgot that, <laughs> that there's a, mm, you know, it, it, it hits, it hits close to home, um, in your own personal circle. You know, I usually just do it for me. And, you know, if it helps someone, it helps someone, but I'm like, Oh, cool. It's like really cool to get some feedback from people close to me. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, like you'll feel like you're just doing it in a vacuum just for yourself. But the other thing that I would say that for every hundred people who read it and get value from it, only one might ever even comment, like message, tell you. So you're really helping exponentially more people, but they just never tell you that it's helping them. Right. So there's like yeah. this silent majority of folks you're really helping by putting it out there. So you got to keep going. Mm -hmm. And yeah, especially with money, like we, our society, we just don't talk about it. Like even in my own family, like I would say we're like pretty open, not like my immediate family, but like cousins and, and siblings and everything. Mm -hmm. We don't like really, everyone just like assumes things. Like I remember yeah. as an example, this was years ago, it's like six years ago or something. We all went out to dinner in LA, my cousin, his wife, my brother and his wife, my husband and me. And the check came at the end and my cousin pushed it over to me and he was like, you definitely make the most out of anyone at this table. So you got it. And I was like, oh, I was making so nothing because when you're starting out like a business, like you're just scraping by and just yeah. like taking whatever you can. And so I was just like, oh, shit, that's what you guys think. And not like I'm trying to make it seem that way. We just no one ever talks about money. And you always kind of like act like everything's fine, even if you're kind of struggling. And in a way, I feel like. I like that. And that's good because I don't like to project money. I never have liked that. Right. Partly, that's my own thing too. It's like, I grew up in Orange County and I, I felt like we were poor. Now, mm -hmm. God, once I have a wider vision of the world, I was like, I did not grow up poor, but in my little, your little world as a kid, I felt like I had less than the other kids. And so I feel like there was so much energy in my body of like, never let them think you're poor. Like, don't be, try to be what you're not, but don't mm -hmm. let them think that. So it's kind of like, never talk about money. Never say you can't afford something. Never, never, never. Like my own whatever issues. I don't know. I just kind of went on a random rant. No, hey. you're, you're preaching to the choir. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Like it's, um, it's just, it, it's a lot of what we're taught in life, money wise, especially it's just through childhood, like. You know, I, I think back to a lot of the habit, and this is something that Ramit talks about, is just like your money habits are a lot, a lot of it stems from how you were raised. So I naturally mm -hmm. have a very cautious view on money because I, we didn't have a ton when we grew up. So it's, it makes complete sense when, when I am what some people would consider frugal, like to me, I just, I've seen the opposite side of things of, mm -hmm. I mean, I can't say that we were like, eating out of trash cans. Like it wasn't like right. that, but it was right. definitely um, not in a, a financially abundant scenario. So we had to be careful with what we spent. And mm -hmm. I've seen the other side of it when you get out of control with that, um, what that does. So it's, it hits close to home. I mean, no matter I, I, every person that is in their own bubble, they could probably attest to that in some way that, I mean, it, it's just, it's tough. And I, I you know, I, I don't know a ton, but I do know where my strengths are and where they're not. And I try to share just like what I've come across because in, it, again, in, in going back to what we were talking about, just does it, if it at least helps me, I'm sure it helps someone else. Cause I know there's probably thousands of people out there that think just like you and just like me, and they just don't know where to go to find this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, you know, we do what we can. We do the best we can and with with the tools and the gifts that we were given. And, you know, even if we help one person, like that's a, a successful journey to me. Definitely. Yeah. And I think by like you putting yourself out there, 
is going to inspire other people to put themselves out there in their own way and in their own path. So even if it's not directly about financial freedom or making money or anything, it, whatever you're putting out there is going to also inspire others to do their own thing in their own way. Yeah. So I mean, because no, no bad side. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so much, I, I don't know. I don't want to say pressure, but it's like, I, I wonder if people are so wrap, wrapped up into this life of like, seeming like everything's perfect like their own little like, like image of or their self image is so important to them that's why instagram was so popular for so long because everyone that um put out videos it was always like only the highlight reels of the good only the good things and i talked to a lot of those people that have you know a lot of followers and you get to know them and you're like oh man your life is nowhere near what it seems to be so it is uh i mean it's i I just wish that there was not so much um, of, of of a polished approach to how people like live their life. I I try to be very be raw. The change you want to see in the world? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I try to be raw in the in the way that I um, share how I'm feeling or or you know what we're doing, um, in, in hopes of it kind of giving people a little nudge of hey, like you're you're, you're fine. Like, you know, we can be authentic with each other because, uh, especially with, with men, it's, it's something that we are, we hold mm. that pride a little too much mm -hmm. of, of like, Oh, I'm fine. I'll be okay. Um, and I don't know if you saw that, that, uh, video the other day of that soccer is like a soccer advertisement, not an advertisement for soccer, but it was like a mental health video yeah, of maybe. those two guys that sit down next to each other. And it's like, four or five or six games and you would think the guy on the i think it's a guy on the right would you know you know he's he would think he's doing well and then the next game that comes back the guy on the left that seemingly wasn't doing okay was the one that came back the guy on the right you know not to get too deep but he was oh God. he did it was an uh commercial so it wasn't yeah, real. yeah but um he was the one that that like unalived himself so I, uh, I think it's important that we're just more open with how we are emotionally and just what we're doing. Um, cause you never know who it might help. So mm -hmm. that's why at least I do what I do. I didn't mean to take this super left, but <laughs> I, uh, I just, while, while it was top of mind, like, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, it's life is hard. So let's, let's do this all together and just be there for mm -hmm. one another. Totally. Yeah. yeah i was my camera yeah. sorry it was my camera was like bugging out for a while wasn't it oh i think it froze a little bit but i could still hear okay. you okay cool awesome oh well, i love what you're doing and i think you should keep it up and do even more thank you i will i will try i, I like genuinely appreciate this feedback this is something that um i'm glad i i learned it now versus like 10 years from now where i like was doing some way way left so that's uh that feedback was genuinely appreciated and i mean if i could help in any way would love to but um heck yeah call 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 <laughs> <laughs> i love it yeah, oh sure. well we june six kids have to stick together true We're oh that's true, true. buddies <laughs> oh my gosh that's so funny uh, when you said, and, and it's, it's nice too. Cause, um, I, I forget the word as it, uh, starts with a P where it's like same forward and backwards. Um, oh, palindrome? yeah, well, it, it's, it's great when it's, um, like European yes. states. So I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> yes. yeah. I went on a, a trip to, um, like Europe recently and there were, going through everything, how to get a visa and it just, it, yeah, makes the process easier. Totally. But when you're uh June 6th, buddies. Yes. Gemini birthday buddies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Love it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this is great. Thank you so much. Um, I, I really do appreciate the help. Yeah, my pleasure. And we'll share this recording on my podcast copy that pops. Cause that's all about helping people with writing 
So hopefully if people are listening to this on there, that they got value out of it and we'll put it on YouTube and all the things. And who knows, maybe just this alone, just in what we talked about with blogs, but then also with money will help people. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, hopefully, hopefully, uh, there's a little gold nugget that people can take from this. I'm, I'm definitely going to watch this back a couple of times and just, um, yeah, just get rocking. Yeah. And you definitely got to take Signe up on her offer, like do an interview with her, chop it up. Like she is such an amazing baller. She used to be a stockbroker in New York, like back when, especially even more so women were not allowed and welcome in things like that. And now she's been doing real luxury real estate. Like she's just, she's really cool. Wow. Yeah. I've, I've known that she's a, she's a killer. She's uh, mm-hmm. everyone, she, everyone says that she's, she's awesome. So, oh, and she's like, the most generous, sweet person, like relatable. Like I'm so lucky. We're both in Southern California. So we've been able to get together for in-person coffee dates really regularly over the past couple of years. And she, I say she's my Hawk bestie. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's uh that's good. But I, I definitely got to keep in, uh, hit her, hit her up and coordinate something for sure. Cause mm-hmm. I mean, I was just, that's, that's amazing that she didn't, there, there was no obligation for her to be here and she just decided yeah. to help out and, yeah. and, and, you know, do it, share some knowledge. So that was also greatly appreciated, but yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to get in touch with her with um, anything that's top of mind. That'd be awesome. All right, cool. Well, how I always close all of my podcasts. So I'll say that uh, since I'm going to run this on the podcast is I always say to people, keep finding ways to write copy that pops. Day. Okay. Honestly, I said it once like early on and then I was like, ah, fuck it. I'll just go with this one. And uh, it's kind of stuck. So there we go. <laughs> YOLO. I love, I, I will never stop saying that. I just, I'll YOLO? sneak it in. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen the lonely Island YOLO with Adam Levine? uh adam levine are are we talking about the the three guys or four guys that yes andy samberg um, yeah samberg so i i know i know i have but it's it's been okay i'm gonna send it to you because you need to watch it again like i love funny videos and that kills me it's so funny so (laughs) we'll have to put that in the show notes go watch yolo with andy samberg and adam levine (laughs) you ought to look out is how they re redo it. Instead of you only live once it's you ought to look out. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have, oh, that's right. They had so many like music videos or parody um, okay. songs. Dick in a box. That's what we dressed yeah. up as for Halloween this year. My husband and I, but we did duck in a box as like <laughs> a, sh- a shout out to my children's book. Duck buddies brought to you by. <laughs> what a good- Laura. What a great segue. I'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> and Mother Lover. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, absolutely killed me. I'm it was uh I'm on a boat, right? That's I'm on a those. boat is a classic. Yeah. Jizz in my pants. Um there's so many. It's it's quality videos. Yeah. <laughs> the classics. Yeah, none of this. None of, I don't know what they're doing nowadays with this this music stuff. Go back to Lonely Island days. Those are oh those are the, the hits. I bet if uh, I would love to see those resurface, like something something happened, they start come, being more popular again. That'd be that'd be the best. Let's make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> I'm down. Oh man. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Oops. I just you know you know what hot corners are on your computer. You can like, maybe it's really on newer computers because I this computer is fairly new and it didn't work on the last one. But you can set up like if you move your mouse to a certain corner, it'll mm. do something like automatically. So in my upper right hand side, if I go over there, it moves everything off of my screen. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. that just happened. So I was like, ah, where are you? I got to come back because I was trying to hit end stream. <laughs> no problem. We got a rocky ending to this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, super duper. Um, 
that was that was a blast. But if you, I, I know you're having something um, coming up with one of the other hawks. Oh I, yeah, we I'll should mention to, that. That's a good try one. To hop in on that. Okay, good, good. Here, let me. I'll put it up on the screen one more time because. Um, how do you do that? Say something while I figure this out. Uh, let's see. I like short walks on the beach. Oh, what? Like... You need to have a closing tagline. Uh oh, like, for like all videos or? Yeah. I I usually just say God bless, stay tuned. Like I don't know, just I I don't have a thing though. <laughs> I I definitely need to have a thing that people can, um, yeah, because they're like I don't know if you know Graham Stefan. He doesn't. It's not a close like closing remark, but it's just like a. What I guess his brand. Uh, mm. It's just funny that he'll say in the beginning, it's like, "Hey, Graham, it's guys here." Just simple things. He's another one of those like personal finance guys who's in real estate and did the whole house hacking thing. But um, I'll have to put some pen to paper and think of some closing remarks for for videos. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Have you ever heard Steve Harvey? Or not? Hold on. Maybe I'm mixing up Paul Harvey, not Steve Harvey. Paul Harvey, he had like, he would tell stories on the radio and God, I'm totally forgetting it, but he would say, and that is the rest of the story. So he'd basically tell this really engaging story that you were like, wow, this person is incredible, but they, he didn't say who they were. Mm -hmm. And then at the end he would be like, and that's the story of Oprah. And that's how Kentucky Fried Chicken started or something like really interesting. But he would tell the story without revealing the details of, that you might know for sure who it is. And it's really cool. But then at the end, he would always say, and that is the rest of the story. Okay. It's it was a like a great way to have retention. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's a good retention uh, tip to like keep people watching. Um, no, that's, that's gold. I'm trying to, I'll have to think I'm, I'm not a great on the spot person, but I'll uh, I'll I'll put some pen to paper. That's usually how I yeah. fix think through stuff. Yeah, and then maybe you can put it at the end of all your blogs. You could say it at the end mm -hmm. of maybe longer videos, maybe not every single like short or something. I don't know, but something you could consider. So coming up on the 19th, we are going to talk about lesson planning and course creation with Anthony Carbone. I don't know how to say his last name, right? right. And my um, bestie from the Czech Republic is going to be on. She's an incredible teacher and uh, does lesson plans all the time. So she'll be great um, as a special guest. And then with Signe, we're going to do on the 20th, we're going to do, so that's Wednesday, we're going to talk about content matching. So using Canva and some visual templates and Google Docs to batch out a bunch of content for like a quarter or a a whole year uh, that's um, on your brand. And so we'll look at her specifically. And then I know Anthony also wants to write a children's book. So I'll probably do one on that. And I'll just share what I've gone through writing Duck Buddies now available on Amazon. And we can talk about <laughs> writing a nonfiction book because that's what I've been helping people do in addition since 2017. So I'm all about that and self-publishing. Launching a podcast, we're going to do that with Emil who's in Tokyo. So we have to find a time maybe like later in a day so that the time zones aren't crazy. So if you ever, have you ever done a podcast there? Um, I've done a couple. Um, I've, I've put out like three on my own that have, uh, I'm the only viewer, so that's great. But I've done others for my other like per sports brand thing. Oh yeah. The kickers of the earth. Yeah. 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 So I did a, a German podcast. Uh, that what? was wild. Yeah, yeah. Hans du Deutschreden? Oh, I no, God no. He was. Oh. He, he, I don't speak a lick of it. But he has. Um, he apparently found me because I'm like one of the more highly ranking guys. Because there's only so many kickers out there. So he had me on, and then I had another guy um, as well. So you know, that's this is my third podcast, I guess, or okay. third. Um, live stream so it's cool wow very cool yeah because that's something you could just start interviewing a bunch of people like signy and other folks in the hawks start 
start with that because it's like more safe zone, you know, people that you kind of mm-hmm. know a little bit and then start expanding out. And eventually maybe we could interview Robert Kiyosaki, Tim Baird, like Ramit, who knows? Mm. Gary. Not, not a bad plan. Yeah. That'd be, yeah, that'd be wild. It would, uh, it'd be one, one for the ages. It could God. be like Uno and financial advice at the same time. So you could be playing Uno while also asking him financial questions and see if he can do both. Okay. I, yeah. I mean, it's something that I've, I've toyed around with. It's like, I don't know. I've, I, I always, I'm usually a good um, person to, to, I, I work off of people. Well, I have a tougher time to like lead conversations. You know, I, I like to just be, I get more reactive to what someone, how they are and then just work around that. I've, I've definitely put some thought into podcasting. It's, it's a more of a mental barrier than anything, but I mean, it's, it definitely, it's like a low pressure thing, but I know how you get better at it. Try it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) How'd you get better at kicking balls into space? Yeah. You just, you just do it. You just kick it. You're just born naturally. Like you're just born kicking really well, I bet. (laughs) <laughs> I, yeah, it was a, it was a soccer thing. I just, I usually, instead of kicking it in the soccer goal, I would hit it over. So I was like, huh, there's probably other sports out there that, <laughs> that cater, cater well to me, not actually making it in the goal, That's uh, funny. but rather older, but. Wow. Um, yeah. It's just practice. Like if you would go back, cause I started my podcast in um, 2016, I was living in Germany at the time, by the way. And uh, I don't even want to go back and listen to them because I'll just like cringe at myself. I'm sure. Or I'll just remember like how nervous I was for things, but eventually you just do it enough. And you're like, Oh, this isn't why, why was I so scared? Just then you just go live and you have two viewers, one viewer right now. <laughs> Let's go. Shout out. Shout out to the loyal one. Out it's there. Probably me because I am watching <laughs> it. <laughs> We have a huge audience right now, but yeah. um, yeah, just practice makes practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Have you ever heard that? I've heard perfect practice makes perfect, but not mm-hmm. that one. Yeah, it's like practice because there is no such thing as perfect, but right. permanent in the sense of like now you for sure know how to do it, or now you for sure are confident that you could, kind of a thing. But yeah, that's good. All right. Yeah. So we're going to do more of these and actually, because Gary on it, the reason I'm doing even doing this is because Gary has said like 10 times on his podcast in the past week to go live, go live, go live, go live, Mm -hmm. like eat a sandwich and go live. And I was like, all right, well, I'm already down to help y'all with what I feel like I know how to do. Why don't we just go live and do that? And then maybe other people will benefit too. We can chop it up and put it on my podcast or wherever. So I was so going to say, do you have um, TikTok? Yeah. You do? Okay. I, yeah, I got, definitely got to follow. But I was going to say, like, some of this some of this stuff. Or or you have Medium as well? I know I have an account, but I never post to it. Do they, they do streaming video now on Medium? Well, not uh, – sorry, not Medium. I was just saying, like, um, to transcribe this. And then, oh, gotcha. and then like, or chop it up, whatever. I mean, I'm just thinking, cause I, I, I know that there's at least one or two gold nuggets. Like I've posted videos before that I was not even, I didn't think would do three views and they're like the most popular ones. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, you never know, I guess. So yeah. that that's also just something that I try to think of, but um, going well, back I mean- to podcasting, I've got to, got to, just get started somewhere. Yeah. Well, maybe when we do it with Emil, you should jump on and just kind of see the steps. Cause it's, I feel like so much of the stuff, like publishing your book on Amazon, launching a podcast, like none of it is brain surgery. You guys can all do it, Mm -hmm. but just to get to that point, you feel like you have to watch 15 videos and read through a hundred blogs. And you're like, well, this one's kind of outdated. Does that still work? And then there's decision fatigue of what should I use for the host and what should I do for whatever? So if I just show you what I do, 
I'm not saying it's the ultimate, the only, or the best per se, but this is what's worked for me. It at least eliminates decision, decision fatigue. And you'd be like, all right, I'm just going to do that just to start. And you can always change it or at least see the whole process. And they're like, oh, that's what Libsyn does. And Libsyn mm -hmm. is the podcast host that I use. And we could talk about Anchor versus not because Anchor's free, but Libsyn's not. I pay $5 a month for like the low one because I'm not publishing that many episodes right now. And it's like, okay, what are the pros and cons? Like I really, I mm -hmm. prefer the paid one. And there's like a reason for that. So we could talk about it and just get stuff, get over those humps of like getting started. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm just a fan of done is better than perfect. Like yes. that's really yes. the, like the one area that I know and I've every like, couple days, there's like a thought. It's like, Hey, you might as well try um, something like that. More of an interview style. I just, I see good pod. I see great podcasts and I'm like, good Lord. Like I'm the, where I'm at to where they are. I'm like, I, I would just rather just watch a ton of those. And okay. I don't know. It's, that's the challenge that I, that I definitely do. do Let face. me ask you this, your target ideal audience. Let's say it's a 25 year old guy who is just getting started and feels intimidated as fuck. Is he going to identify with you who's maybe a little nervous, a little bit shy and like just kind of getting his bearings? Or is he going to identify with someone who's been doing it for 30 years and is already so polished and feels like out of reach? He'll never get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely me. Right. Yeah. And so like you're doing a disservice by not doing it. Because there are people who would identify more with you than with me, than with Gary, than with Signe, but you're not showing up for them mm -hmm. in all the ways that you could. Of course, you are doing things, but like, I'm just encouraging you to push more. Yeah, that's a uh, that's duly needed because uh, I have kind of it's it's weird because I don't have a ton of like influences that I can lean on um, as much as i would like certain like in my area locally so it's nice to have that that person like yourself that's just like hey who cares just go for it you know so no nah, that's that's huge just having that little extra push um yeah no you're you're spot on yeah, yeah. okay cool well I'll, I'll put some pieces together i gotta get i gotta get the um I mean, I have an air account. I put out like three, three posts. So we'll <laughs> make that four air? very soon. Air, right? Isn't that, What's isn't that? that the podcast, the, the podcast account, the one that you oh, said anchor? there's an like, anchor. Why did I say air? Um, yeah. So anchor. That's okay. yeah. Cause I feel like that's the fastest get, just get going. Just it's cheapest and fastest. Cause it's free, right? You just go, go, go. Yeah, the way because I what I did, I think I started doing podcasts and helping. I actually helped other people lock, launch podcasts before I did mine, and they didn't have Anchor back then. So that's kind of like I just learned a way, and I just keep doing that. So I can share um, what I've done on that one. So cool. Um, future topics are coming, and if you think of anything else let us, let me know and let's put it out there. My thought was because Gary keeps saying it, I'm like, okay, his favorite number is five and my favorite number is five. And I swear I liked five before I ever knew who Gary was. I have a story about why. And, um, so I was thinking, what if I committed to, I don't know if I want to say it publicly doing 55 lives before I decide if I should keep doing it or not. Why not? You know, that's a lot. or like that's a, 55. That's a ton before VCon in August. I mean, you make it well known. I think people show up for it. I mean, you put it out there. So it's it's definitely been in the back of your head for some time. So why not? Yeah. And the reason I'm liking this also is like, I don't want to prepare a lot. I don't want to edit. Because mm -hmm. if I have to prepare a lot or I have to edit, I'll just not do it. Because I'm right. just like, I'm too tired for that as a mom. <laughs> so if I can just go live and be like, Hey, let's just like mastermind on something. I do that for fun all the time. Anyway, might as well just put it on live and 
maybe it helps people. Yeah. I mean, you never know when that, like you catch that moment on camera of whenever it clicks, either something you learned or something they learned. Um, why not? You know, Yeah. what's the, what's the worst that could happen? And then also what's the best thing that could happen? And if you I'm know? helping you, I don't really care if anyone else watches it. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten more than enough out of, out of this call. This was like exactly what I was hoping to get. Just something just a little bit more of an idea of what to do and what not to do. So, I mean, you've checked, you, you've, you've definitely helped me. So I, I, I promise you there's four, 54 other people um, that would love a similar experience. And I mean, there's, there's thousands of people in the community that, that have been pro probably looking for this exact kind of feeling. So. Cool. I know it's like fun to be a fly on the wall. So you could just, Hang, like I watch Gary do this all the time. Like I want to just hear what Gary thinks about random stuff. So maybe there's people who more identify with me or with you and they want to watch us think about, talk about things. Think about things. Have you seen that, uh, that guy from like Finland or I'm got my brain is just going, uh, I'm thinking of this guy now. Cause I listened to him like the other day, he went to Eurovision. Um, and he, he was like second place his, his band. I forget the name, um, but they have a song called Think About Things. It's oh, like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. I just, just like thinking about things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, this, is a, this is a riot. Good. Well, we'll have maybe we'll have to plan one for June 6th so we can do like a course. double birthday bash live stream. <laughs> of course. Bring confetti. Just make it a thing. We get a full thing. Well, I know, you know what, honestly, when I see you like beating Gary at Uno, do you know what the number one thing I think about is now I want to beat you at Uno. <laughs> of course. Well, it's just, it's just funny. Cause like I, I now I, I don't want to be the guy that like everyone has to play, but that's like how it turned, how it transpired. Um, but good Lord, I was nervous. I was so nervous to play. I have like, I, I'm glad they didn't really catch it, but my hands were like shaking when I was putting down cards. Oh my God. I have stories about shaking and nerves when I first was a teacher. Oh my God. Like we all start somewhere. Like, yeah. Well, it's crazy. Cause like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I can think on my, on one hand, the number of times that I've just uncontrollably, like it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't like I was a nervous wreck, but it was definitely nerves were there. Oh, yeah. Um, I remember I got my driving test when I, you know, got a license. I, my foot was like shaking so bad when I was trying to press the gas and the brake. Like, it was so bad. And I like, I squeaked by because it was probably just, it was a lot of breaking and juddering. So anyway, yeah, it, it's, um, it was a blast. I mean, it means that you care about something when you're nervous. So I don't mind it. That's true. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I got to go back to baking more bread. It's yeah. ready for its second rise. Have you ever why baked don't you bread? Put it, why don't you just have a, uh, what do I have? Hamilton? Hamilton Beach, I think is the bread maker I have. I, I don't know if that's, okay. I don't know. And I do have a bread maker too, but I, I mean, I feel like I like it. I like the taste better. Actually, okay. the truth be told is a neighbor of mine. She's like, I will pay you. Will you make me some bread? And I'm like, you don't have to pay me. And she's like, no, I insist. Like, you are taking time. So she's having a dinner party and she wants me to make two loaves of bread. So there you go. All right. I, I had, um, I, I was in that, that stage in COVID where I was like all about frugal living and I joined a bread making group. There are some pros. Oh, they it have is like, such a science. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. I, I, I added like an extra, uh, teaspoon of yeast or what a pinch of oh. yeast or whatever. The whole thing exploded. I was like, <laughs> "Holy cow!" Like it, it, it cool. you have to get it exact, a, like down to the to the uh, gram, or else it's it's all ruined. So That's funny. Yeah, bread making is is tough, but I don't want to I don't want to hold you up too much uh, too much longer. But no, this is a blast. Yeah, this is super fun. All right, cool. Well, keep finding ways to write copy the pops, people, and. Uh, God bless. Stay tuned. Right. I don't know. You tell me. Yeah. Let's do that. I, well, I told you I was going to work on it. You goof. Hey, what if, I know I put you on the spot. <laughs> Something. 
What if you did something like mixing kicking and money? Hmm. I don't know. I, I just, because I've been the, the kicking guy for so long. Mm, you don't want to be wanna, kicking guy? I don't want to be kicking guy. I mean, it's it's somebody that I I I was at one point. Um, Do you want to be maybe. Uno guy? What? Do you want to be Uno guy? I guess. I mean, I, I changed my Twitter username to Picky Uno. I so I guess I guess for right now I'm, I'm Uno guy. How do you pronounce your last name for real? Piccioni. Piccioni. Okay. There's probably some Italian out there that's like, ah, oh, what are you doing? It's why, a Piccioni. Why do you say it like should... that? <laughs> but I'm that's Italian how. Too. That's how. Yeah. What? I'm Italian too, partially. Oh, okay. So you're, are you German and Italian? I'm not German at all. I just speak it. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. So I'm mostly Danish. My last name, Peterson with the S E N is Danish. And then on my dad's mom's side, she was full Italian. Mm, okay. Yeah. I, so I even, I went back to Italy. I think it was in 2018. I, oh God, no, no, this was, I think this, never mind. This is when we were living in Germany. So this is in 2016. We, my husband and I and our dog, <laughs> we took a train from Rome into like the middle of Italy to like the last stop of this regional bumpy old train to go find the church where my great grandmother was christened. And it's a whole story, but we get off the train and we start walking around. It's just like neighborhoods. And no one's speaking is in, speaking English because like it's in the middle of Italy. Mm -hmm. And so we see this like older lady in front of her house. And I was like, excuse me. I don't speak any Italian. And I'm just like, excuse me, do you speak English? And I'm like holding up a map. And she just goes uh, uh, and like goes in the house and shuts the door. And we're like, oh, my God. And it is hot. Like, I think it's in July or something. And we're just like sweating. And so we're in the middle. Like we have no I thought like a dumb American maybe who has traveled a lot, by the way, I thought we'd get out. We just walk around and find like the old square mm -hmm. and like, it would be right there. No. So we go to the, we just walk down the street trying to figure out what to go on, what to do. And there's this little restaurant. And so my husband sits down with the dog outside and I start to go into the restaurant to get a menu. Cause I was like, let's just take a break, get a cold drink and figure out what's going on. And so as I'm about to walk in, there's these five young guys standing around like doing scratchers or something. And I think, oh, they're younger. So maybe there's a higher chance they speak English. <laughs> so I was like, excuse me, guys, do you speak English? And so all like four out of five of them look at this one guy. They're like, he speaks the best English. And so he's like, uh, not very well, but yes, what can I do? And I said, this is so random, but I show a picture, this grainy picture of this church. I'm like, I'm trying to find this church. I have no idea where it is. And he goes, huh? Well, I'm a priest. So <laughs> I know he is a priest. Oh, of course. Like a 23 year old priest in the middle of nowhere, Italy. So anyway, we end up going. They say, come with us. We'll take you. So they have two cars. So we all pile in with our dog into these cars and we go driving like 20 minutes to go find this church. And so we get out, we walk and we walk up to the church and we're like, this isn't it. And they're like, oh. So the guy's like calling his other priest friends. And then they like, oh, well, I know which one it is. We get back in the car. We go drive to another church. That's the church. Wow. Oh so we take gosh. pictures in front of it. Like so sweet and amazing. It was just such a magical experience. Why am I telling this story? Italy. I'm yeah. Italian. I, you know, that's what we do. We have our, we have our <laughs> stories. Was a just curious. Was the guy's name Fabrizio? It seems like all Italians that God, that uh, that are good tour guides are like ah Fabrizio. Anyway, I just anytime I, I can sneak in an Italian accent, I'll try. Yeah. So I yeah. don't know, but I I feel like I got one of their names or addresses. I can't find it because once we finally got home, because after that we ended up staying. Cause we were, we stayed in Rome for like five weeks and then we, our last stop was in Ireland for a couple of weeks. Then we back back to the U S and we stayed with my husband's family at East coast just to visit. So by the time we got back, it was like two months later or something and I can't find their address, but I wanted to send them some American treats and stuff just as a thank you. And I never did because I don't know where the address is. And I don't know their names. 
if you're yeah. out there, tell yeah. me. <laughs> he's our one viewer. He's a, yeah, he's our Imagine. one viewer. <laughs> oh man. Thank you. Grazie. 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 <laughs> Pizza pasta. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. All right. Well, maybe we should wrap this up one hour yeah. and 45 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> we were rolling. No, but I mean, I, I hope, uh, I, I, yeah, that was great. It was great. I, I've got to, I've got to go to downtown with the little one. Um, I promise him a day at Ooh. the market. So we'll, how old is he now? Uh, she's, she's, uh, two years. I just say two years. She'll mm -hmm. be three in a, you know, 10 months. So <laughs> I, I just oh, say two. when's her birthday, October. She's, she, well, uh, two years, four months, but yeah, she's, she's born in, um, in August. August 8th. So, oh, actually, she's eight, another eight. one of those. Yeah. She's another one of those uh, palindrome or however you would call it with dates. But yeah, she's, uh, it's easy, easy as heck. So, that's good. You know, it, it works both ways because we'll get her a dual citizenship soon. So, it'll Where? make life for to Russia. My what? wife's Russian. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want dual citizenship. <laughs> oh, wherever. wherever russia germany i yeah. don't care it's uh yeah just you know uh, i'm trying to think of a... anywhere yeah there's just to have one that's cool all righty all right yeah i want to uh, i'm going to see what tink tink or trinkets i want to see what trinkets they have in the square downtown but Keep uh, keep on baking, baking that. What are you making, sourdough? No, I ended up tossing. I literally made sourdough like every couple of days for two years. And I finally just let it die this summer, my starter. So I'm making, um, it's called a bloomer. It's from Paul Hollywood's bread recipe book. Because we started watching the Great British Baking Show like two years mm -hmm. ago. And... Since we don't eat meat or much dairy, I can't eat like most of the things they cook, but the bread I can do, totally do. So I bought his book and started making some things from that. So. Heck yeah. Well, super. I've got to, I've got to get back into the bread game. Life is, life is good when you've got bread on hand. Maybe we should do like a Hawk live stream where we're all making bread at the same time well my my process is super i just like mix everything and throw it into the bread maker but like a formal That's one funny. i should i should do like a more exquisite type of bread versus just white bread you mm. know so let's let's do some let's do something crazy yeah because sydney like is an amazing baker i don't know if she does a lot of breads but she does like sweet treats and stuff so we might have some other hangout hawks that we could do like a baking challenge live stream oh geez okay that'd be that'd be uh that'd be a blast i mean i'm i can find my way around a recipe as long as i get it down to the the, the pinch of the yeast but other than that hopefully um it comes out well but <laughs> all right all right back to it have a good rest of your day you too Bye bye. Keep, keep finding ways to write copy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Okay.